Thanks, Marilyn. Just out of curiosity, how many people do hair transplants in this room? Good, okay. So what I'm going to talk about are things that are pro hopefully interesting for those that don't do it, and also hopefully helpful for those that do do it, because I try to keep up with all the meetings out there. Um, let's see where this advances. Here we go. Disclosures, I think I made about 120 bucks on my book last year, so <laughs> maybe 130, I don't know. Um, so things that helped me this year, I just sort of put a hodgepodge of things that I thought were, that really helped my, my practice on a clinical level, as well as things I think are interesting that I learned from the meeting. So this uh, device, I don't make any money off this, but it's a really nice self-fulfilling uh, self uh, device. I don't think it's as helpful for facelifts per se, because it's only a 3cc uh, syringe, but for donor tumescence, it's wonderful, my God, and recipient tumescence, it's totally, totally made my life Oh, just wonderful. I just absolutely love using this device. It's fantastic for, for self-filling. It makes things so much easier. It reduces needle stick injuries, and it's wonderful for donor and recipient tumescence. Um, and French, they say, plus ça change, plus c'est même shows. You know, we started with these large punch graphs, and I moved over to very, very tiny slits, and I've moved back toward these micro punches that range from 0.5 millimeters up to about 1.25 millimeters. And the reason I think I really love these micro punches now, it, it visually reduces the bald scalp because you're taking little cores of bald scalp out. And it's something that I've been doing now for about two years and it really, I, I think I'm getting twice as much visual density than I did in the past. I think the reason for that is that you get, when you're putting a, a little needle stick and you're putting a, a graft in there, you're carrying epidermis or epithelium forward and you're actually visually expanding the scalp. This is a way that you can visually, hopefully, either maintain or slightly reduce the visual bald scalp there. And I, I really like using this. And I don't use it all the time. If there's too much native hairs there, then I can't. But otherwise, uh, it, it's a really powerful technique that I love. Um, you know, one thing that's really important is for those that do hair restoration, it's, it's important to counsel a patient about topical products that are out there to help enhance camouflage. Even after a transplant, sometimes it can be helpful. Um, this product, I have no financial uh, relationships with any of these products, but uh, one thing I, I, I think is interesting is Nanogen out of England argues that their product, unlike Topic, if you put this locking mechanism in, you can actually swim with this and it doesn't come out. So I, I have not had enough clinical experience to say whether their claim is accurate or not, but I think that's a, a far leap forward um, if that's truly the case until you shower and it washes out. So this is just a magnetic wool fiber that, uh, that you put onto the scalp and it just creates a visual density and it blurs out the, the bald scalp. Um, one thing that's really on my mind and I think on the mind of the consumer if you look at the internet today is how many claims about long-term or if permanent sexual side effects uh, on, online from Propecia. Um, one thing about Propecia is that, uh, just for you guys, if you don't know this, there, it's, it's basically coming off patent by end of 2012, and they'll have a generic version which will markedly reduce the price by 2013. But to sort of give you a, a quick history of where Propecia side effects started, uh, besides some of the known temporary sexual side effects we all know about on the package insert, uh, back a few years ago there were some ideas of whether there was actually increase in, in prostate cancer risk. Initially it said that there was actually a higher risk of high-grade prostate cancer risk. Subsequent to that, some uh, studies have shown that perhaps what's causing that is an artifact where there's actually a shrinkage of the prostate, so there's a, maybe a higher likelihood of finding the prostate cancer. I don't think we're really clear exactly all about that, but uh, now with, with those things that are, that are coming forward, I think it's important that we live in a litigious culture, and I, I really just, I have a very long uh, consent form for my patients, and I'm happy to give it to you. It's actually not mine. It's from uh, Bob Bernstein up in New York, and, and if, you, if you have uh, patients on a Propecia, I think it's not a bad idea to have them read over and sign it. The other thing in the last year that they've said is that there can be uh, breast cancer risks in men and women, but obviously very, very low incidence. But I think it's important when you counsel a patient that you go through all the side effects with them just so that they know what's out there and so they can make a more educated opinion. I, I personally think um, in terms of permanent sexual side effects, the, you know, the prevalence of ED out there is quite high, and I don't think that the finasteride is causing that, but I don't have any evidence. And at least it's propelled the company, Merck, to do some investigative work on this and see if, in fact, there is uh, a link toward any more uh, long-term side effects uh, on a sexual level with Propecia. This has been a 
probably the, the best thing that I, I've incorporated into my hair business in the last year. Again, no financial interest whatsoever with this uh, Korean company. But the line and planner, especially for someone just starting out that may not have really good placers out there, this instrument, which is single use for the needles, it lo you load the graft onto the uh, implanter and then you place it and it discharges. So you're actually, you're actually creating the recipient site and also dislodging the graft and putting the graft into the site so you don't need a, uh, someone to place for you. And where I find it really useful and amazing, I actually on Monday morning I have a case, is, a, uh, is eyebrow transplants, where eyebrows in the past were a really difficult transplantation because you think about how complicated those angles are. You know, you have this fan tail in the medial aspect and this fish tail going out, very, very flat, single, single grafts that are all bunched really tightly together. My placers had a hard time actually placing into these really, really uh, pro proximate sites that are all flat and different angles. Now, what's so wonderful about this is that I'm actually, they're actually loading it. So I have one person loading it. I place and make the site, and I can actually see the graph already sitting there. It's, and, and you can actually see your gra the design work coming in front of you. And it's really, it's amazing. It's changed everything. Then I have one more person next to me just making sure that the, uh, the hair is placed correctly. And what's really nice about this is where the bevel is, you can actually take the hair curl coming out in that direction. So remember that the hairs don't just go straight. There's a slight curl to it. And when you're doing eyebrows, you want the curl to be down so it doesn't angle upwards. And so it's already built in with a curl in the right direction. I just have my second placer come and just make sure that the depth is right and that the curl is correct. But it really, really uh, makes these, this uh, procedure a work of art. And I think another place for, for uh, people who are just starting out that may have difficulty with temple placements that have to be really low angled, uh, the, and placers have a hard time placing into the temples. Uh, my placers are really good with that, but if not, you can actually use this device as well. But one caveat is be very careful when you're doing temples because it's, it's, it is an advanced uh, transplantation area. Um, another thing that I was really enchanted by at the last meeting in Anchorage was the use of platelet-rich plasma and A-cell. And A-cell is a uh, porcine uh, uh, bladder. Actually, what I, I saw these studies and I just got so enchanted that I think this could be uh, amazing as I'm charging my patients at cost to incorporate this into each of the transplants I'm doing. And I started about two or three months ago. What are the things this, this uh, can do? Well, some of the claims and I've, the, the photographs I saw were quite impressive. And, the people were not, uh, did not have a financial relationship with the co uh, companies that I saw when I was hearing them speak, so that was very important to me as well, and nor do I. And um, the uh, PRP, they've, they've shown just injecting into like bald crowns and bald areas without even a transplant, they've shown growth. And how durable is that growth? It's unclear whether it's just a year or w whether it's longer, but I think that's extremely fascinating. So what I've been doing in my cases is I've been doing a transplant and so like let's say I do the front and I transplant the front and the crown is an area I, I don't have enough grafts to transplant during that session I'll go ahead and take activated PRP and inject it into the crown and right now I'm only three months into it so clearly too early to see if I have any results yet but I'll follow up with this next year and let you know if I'm still excited about it or not but it's something that I think is very interesting um, I'm also using the PRP and A cell mixed together and, and injecting it around the donor wound and there's a doctor out of New York that showed a sp just anecdotally just one uh, scar, a split scar study with one half. You couldn't even see the scar. And the other side was actually a bit widened and he had injected a cell PRP on the one side and not on the other side. And that was definitive enough that even though it's just one anecdotal um, case, it was just pretty remarkable that I started incorporating this. I felt like I wasn't giving the standard of care if I, if I wasn't doing this now. Still, I always em emphasize the patients is a bit experimental at that level still. But I, I think that some people are just using PRP and some people are just using A-cell. Um, I find that the highest potential of getting good results may be to incorporate both of them, which some of the doctors are doing out there. And uh, that's what I'm doing. If you want my protocol, I'll be happy to email it to you uh, as well. And also, uh, one thing is that potentially even higher graft growth in that area as well. So higher percentage of graft growth, which is obviously the end product we're all, all wanting. Um, Scalp micropigmentation is, was an interesting uh, talk. I'm writing a new, a new uh, hair transplant book coming out in a couple of years that incorporates all the uh, 
other um, fascinating ideas like PRPA cell and scalp micropigmentation, but this is to me really fascinating. So if you've got people out there, let's say even if you don't do hair restoration, but they've got a scar in their scalp that is linear and you maybe try to cut it out, it didn't work, and uh, you don't know how to do hair transplants, you may want to consider even finding someone of, uh, of a good artistic quality that can, can micropigment the scalp and cover the defects. So this is something that we don't think about as an alternative or as an adjunct, but this is something that um, I actually now, if, uh, if patients come in and they've got areas that I think that I can't manage 100%, I always counsel them with the potential for uh, scalp micropigmentation as an, as an alternative or as an adjunct to my services. One thing, um, you know, in the, in the world of facioplastic surgery, there are certain companies that are um, sort of uh, making medicine more corporate. I think there are some things that there's some shortcuts doctors going in the world of hair restoration are doing now using more techs to do things. I, I don't want to mention any companies by name. But I think that what's really important and, and the thing that I try to emphasize is that we are physicians, we are surgeons, and I think it's important to have that role still very much involved with the patient in terms of the uh, art artistry and the design. I run a workshop I'm going to mention in a second. Um, and uh, I, I think I'm, it's important that for all of us not to take shortcuts and for all of us to, to emphasize that we are still leading the charge in terms of quality and patient care. My book, small plug, and uh, the Bahamas, uh, I'm going to be doing a couple courses there um, at the Bahamas at, in the, at the International Society of Hair Restoration, Hair Restoration Surgery. If you guys are not part of that, I encourage you to join. It's a fantastic organization. And uh, I run a workshop in St. Louis, uh, November 15th to the 18th, and um, I really encourage you to come. It's a fantastic weekend, and I, I love doing it. Thank you.